Hey everybody, welcome back to the Automation Podcast. My name is Sean Tierney and this week on the show, I meet up with Gabby Dinelli from Cortago to learn all about their wireless IO link products. Gabby, thank you for coming on the Automation Podcast. I'm excited to learn about what you guys offer in the industrial wireless automation area for products. But before we get into that, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, sure. So of course, hi, Sean. Thank you very much for hosting us today. Um, and my name is Gabby Danielli, and I'm the Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer at Cortigo. Uh, Cortigo is a, it's a global company. We have offices in North America, in Germany, in Italy, and uh, in Israel. And uh, Cortigo is, is focused on, we provide industrial wireless automation solutions. And we're pretty much focused on, on creating a much more unified manufacturing connectivity space anywhere, literally, in the factory, without barriers, with our main goal of enabling machines and production lines to do more. We um, we provide a combination of both hardware and software products, and uh, we're working with the automation equipment manufacturers of the world to integrate our products. With uh, We're working with machine builders to design innovative machines and with system integrators to do machine retrofitting and general deployments of our solutions and manufacturing facilities. Um, today, now in addition to introducing some of the core technology that's uh, driving our solutions, which is IO-Link Wireless, which I'll talk about uh, quite a bit, I'll also be focusing on some of the key you know, applications and the, and the solutions that are benefiting uh, from our products and technology. And the key thing that I want to demonstrate today is to show how we're, uh, we're breaking some of the barriers, some of the limits that exist today with machine communication and how we're enabling solutions and designs that were not possible before to be much more flexible, much more adaptive, much faster and more sustainable. With that, Let's kick it off and start with uh, actually some of the gaps that we're dealing with. So when we're looking at the, in the industrial and the factory automation space, you know, there, there are many limitations in terms of the connectivity. This can be due to um, high speed components such as these smart conveying systems, um, hard to reach places, uh, and overall, in some cases, deployment complexity. Now, some of these examples you can see here include these uh, linear track systems, uh, includes uh, robotics, uh, can include uh, large scale machine retrofits, and also intelligent machine tooling like CNC milling, grinding machines, which are rotating at thousands of rounds per minute. Now, we need to enable communication anywhere. We need to enable that communication without limitations. We need to increase the flexibility of these machines and devices because we wanna have actions, right? Uh, while in high speed motion as much as possible right the, the automation footprint just increases and all this we want to reduce the footprint of the machine we want to reduce the maintenance operations and we want to reduce the complexity of the machine and in many of these cases when we're looking at the common denominator for all these it's literally it's basically a, a wireless solution but not just a wireless solution right it's a wireless solution that's designed for factory automation <clears throat> and when we're saying wireless we're not just saying for monitoring, you know, to get sensor data. We're actually talking about monitoring and control. So both sensing and actuation. Now, the problem is that when you look at conventional wireless systems today, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the Zigbee, they do not meet the harsh demands of factory automation communication, not in terms of latency, not in terms of scalability, not in terms of reliability, but you know what? Nor were they designed for those uh, kinds of uh, requirements. And this is where we get into, as I mentioned, the core technology that's driving our solution, which is IO-Link Wireless. So quick introduction on IO-Link Wireless. Um, IO-Link Wireless, um, as mentioned, is part of the IO-Link uh, standard, and it was designed specifically for factory automation. It was designed not just for factory automation, but for control and monitoring, for sensors and actuators. It's a universal standard, an IEC global standard, which is part of the IO-Link standard. IO-Link Wireless specifically was launched in 2018. It has a very uh, low latency. It's a latency of five milliseconds, which basically means that it's actually uh, three subcycles of 1.6 milliseconds, 1.6 milliseconds between master and device <clears throat> times three repetitions. And that gives us the latency of five milliseconds, which is suitable also for control applications. It has a, what we call ultra high reliability, pretty much cable grade reliability. And it's also important to mention all these uh, uh, requirements here are part of the standard. So in order to adhere to the IOLink wireless standard and be compatible with the standard and compliant with the standard, you have to basically have 
all these as part of your wireless protocol and your wireless devices. Uh, we measure the reliability based on the pair, the packet error rate. And this is literally a million times more reliable than other wireless systems. So the packet error rate, for example, with IOLINK wireless is 10 to the power of minus nine. Whereas with other uh, conventional wireless systems, be it Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the Zigbee, um, it is actually 10 to the power of minus three. So literally a million times more reliable than other wireless uh, systems. And it's also scalable. It's scalable to support hundreds of wireless devices in a machine or in a work cell. We have some machines that we're uh, you know, developing with machine builders that have 300 actuators in constant motion on a single on a single machine. And it's also a deterministic uh, protocol. It's not a best effort uh, protocol. So it's a guaranteed uh, delivery uh, between the master um, and the uh, and the device. So this is a first for me. So you're saying, all right, so typically when we think wireless and industrial automation, we have a few nodes, right? Or if it's a SCADA system, maybe we have 100 nodes, but that's SCADA, that's different. You're talking that you have hundreds of nodes all with a five millisecond update rate on a single machine, all in motion. Right, exactly. A great example for that would be, as I mentioned, the you know the transport track systems or the smart conveying systems. You can have some of these uh, systems. You know, they can be like uh, uh, you know the, the, the Rockwell I track system. It can be the BNR Copes track system. It can be all sorts of systems from vendors out there um, that have these movers or shuttles, right? That are in constant motion, can get to speeds of four meters per second. Each one of those can have several actuators and sensors on each shuttle while moving on a single machine. That's a great example of the, the kind of scalability that can be reached. Um, other cases, for example, you know, we've seen end of arm toolings where you have like this uh, big tool or tray on an end of arm large robot where you can get even up to 50, 60 IOs right on a single uh, tray or tool like that. And all that can be controlled wirelessly. Nice. OK, so how does it look like? So that was basically the, the protocol. And what Cortigo does, of course, we are implementing the IOLink uh, wireless protocol and the IOLink wireless stack. But we're also uh, uh, developing and, 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 and manufacturing hardware and software products to support these uh, solutions. So I'll start off from the layer at the bottom. The layer at the bottom represents the device level, meaning the sensors or the actuators on the machines or on the production lines. And there are two flavors of products that Cortigo uh, provides uh, with IOLINK wireless uh, compatibility here. One is the enclosed products that enable basically connecting to off-the-shelf devices and pretty much in a plug-and-play manner, taking an existing device and turning it into IOLINK wireless and the other is an embedded option. So let's start with the um, off-the-shelf option or uh, taking existing devices. There's two type of devices, these kind of uh, turquoise greenish device here, devices here. One, this one over here, if you see my cursor, is called the, the bridge, the Tigo bridge. It's an IOLINK wireless bridge. So this is a one-to-one -one device that takes, for example, an IOLINK sensor. You can see here an IOLINK uh, sensor or an IOLINK actuator, in this case, smart light, and turns them into a, an IOLINK wireless uh, device. No need to do anything on the sensor side or on the device side, completely compatible. The other device is a, is a multi-port IOLINK wireless hub. In this case, you can take multiple devices. They can be digital, they can be IOLINK, they can be analog, and connect them to these ports, up to six digital devices, for example, and it turns them into IOLINK wireless. Great example here, you can see, for example, this mover or shuttle on a transport track system where you can take multiple uh, pumps, vibration sensor, any other type of sensor, load cell, uh, whatever you like, and connect multiples of those and actually control, get both control data and sensing data uh, on board um, these uh, systems with a multi-port hub. So for the audio audience, the hub, just to paint a visual picture, this looks like your on-machine I.O., your blog I.O., with a bunch of, it looks like M12s or M8s on it. So you would wire your six devices into it with some quick disconnect cables, and then it's wireless. You know, it has exactly. this wireless symbol above it. But then on the bridge, this kind of looks like a um, like a cube with those quick disconnect cables on it that you would attach to, like, your photo eye or your... your um, whatever device it was, your actuator. So it's almost like that in, in cable uh, connection. Of course, you still have to bring power in, in there, but that would be the wireless portion. So it would convert your existing, let's say, photo eye with IOLINK to a IOLINK wireless, and that's the bridge device. So go ahead. I'm I sorry. Can... I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's fine. Exactly. So the bridge, you know, you can call it like a, like a, like a, like a dongle, right, or mm -hmm. an adapter, right? So it's pretty much a dongle. As you mentioned, it has M12 connectors, standard M12 connectors, 
which connect to the devices <clears throat> and converts them to IO-Link uh, wireless with an embedded antenna inside. Um, and so the other option is an embedded option. So we also offer the modules, okay, the, the PCB, the printed circuit board that has all the IO-Link wireless stack um, embedded in it, of course, and all the radio components embedded in it. Just to give you a sense of size, this PCB is 11 by 18 millimeters. So it's pretty small, okay? And, and, and this chip is now and can be embedded inside uh, devices. So in many cases, uh, it's not possible to create this kind of adapter or external, you know, adapter or converter. Uh, two examples you can see here. One is a, a gripper uh, at the end of arm of a collaborative robot. And the other is actually a, a tool, in this case, a jaw that's mounted on a chuck of a CNC machine where we've embedded the module, the IO-Link wireless module, um, inside these devices. So in the case of the of the robot, it's actually controlling the grippers. So it's getting the commands from the PLC of the robot and sending them to the uh, to the module inside the grippers to control the grippers with no need to run cables on the robotic arm. And in the case of the CNC machine here, we're actually connecting to sensors such as force sensor, vibration sensor, temperature sensor, and we're able to send that data from the jaw while it's machining, while it's spinning at thousands of rounds per minute. Do you think that embedded device would fit inside that photo eye? Um, yeah, 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 of course. That's how small yeah. it is. So you yeah, may yeah, actually start small. seeing these these air versions embedded in other people's products, not just end of arm tools for robots, which would be very, very popular, but actually into photo eyes and other like devices. Very interesting. Right. So 11 by 18 pretty much would be like uh, like a, uh, like a quarter of an inch by uh, whatever, 0 0.7 of an inch. Wow, that's small. Something like that. <clears throat> and now these devices are communicating wirelessly um, over the air with what's called a master, an IO-Link wireless master, in this case, the Tigo master. Um, and in addition to communicating wirelessly with these devices, the master, and in this case, it's also it's an IP67 industrial grade device, uh, communicates both at the OT level and at the IT level. At the OT level, it can communicate with industrial Ethernet protocols, for example, Ethernet IP, Profinet, EtherCAT, and OPC UA directly with the PLC, okay? And it can also communicate with external applications, be it on-premise applications or any other types of uh, cloud applications, okay, via MQTT, OPC UA. So now, Let's talk about some of the solutions and some of the applications where this can be used. What we're seeing is that there is a bunch of solutions uh, pretty much across the, the factory that, um, that can use the, uh, the IO-Link wireless solutions. And in many cases, um, things that could not be done before. So let's start off with an example here of the um, independent cart movers or what's called smart conveying system or linear track systems, transport track systems. There are many names for these types of solutions. Um, and as we can see, <clears throat> this is a very nice design of a, of, of a conveyor system because the movers are uh, independent, they're asynchronous. It's not like a regular conveyor where everything moves uh, together, right, uh, with a fixed pitch. There's a variable pitch here for each mover. Um, and this is controlled with inductive power through the PLC, which is nice. However, what you'll see on all of these systems, when you look at the mover itself, the mover itself is actually uh, not that smart because it's a flat piece of metal, right, where you can place products on it as they're moving. But if you want to do actions on the mover, you would still need external components. You would need an external robotic arm. You would need delta robots for pick and place from the movers. You cannot actuate on the movers because communication with these movers are moving at four meters per second or four yards per second. Um, they um, that the inductive power rail cannot relay communication or stable communication. So you need to be able to have a very low latency type of communication on one hand, but on the other hand, um, you wanna you wanna be able to you, to be very reliable and scalable, as we mentioned. In some cases, hundreds of movers in a, in, in a single machine. 
Yeah, so typically and, these movers are taking whatever the product is and moving it from cell to cell to cell. There's really no nothing happening on the mover itself. It's really just that tray that's moving, you know, like like you described from cell to cell to cell and all the work's done on the cell. And there's no real communication with what's on the mover. So right. just to paint a picture for the audio audience, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead. Let me turn it back to you. And, and of course, cables are not an option here. Okay, in the same way that there's no cables to power up the movers, um, cables for communication here are not an option because they would get tangled, right? The second this thing starts <laughs> spinning and turning. Um, that That's one thing. There's no flexibility here. And also uh, the changeovers are not flexible because if I need to put a certain product, let's say with a certain diameter on the mover, I would need a specific tool that would hold that product. If that product now changes, its diameter changes or its form and shape changes, now I would need to stop all the movers and on each mover I would need to, to change basically the tool, the specific tool that's yeah. holding that specific product. If we could actuate on the movers, meaning if we could control a pump, a gripper, a valve, uh, a servo motor on the mover, now we would have that flexibility which would enable us to do automatic changeovers and, and basically get rid of dedicated or you know any custom tools. So that's basically the problem that we're seeing today. And I think wireless is actually a perfect solution uh, for this kind of a system. What you can see here um, is uh, in this example, it's that same bridge we were we were talking about is connected now to a gripper, uh, two grippers, two kinds uh, on, on the mover. OK, so there's power that's relayed to the mover itself, uh, and that power is driving the, you know, the bridge and the device on the mover while it's moving. And basically, the master is connected to the PLC of this transport track system and communicating with these movers while they're in motion. So hundreds of movers, two to four meters or yards per second, five milliseconds latency, very high synchronization rate at the microseconds, actually, by using protocols, for example, like SIP sync in between movers and systems, uh, we get to even you know 20 microsecond synchronization rates or jitter. Um, and multiple IOs on each mover. In this example, you can see a single device, but you can also connect the hub and have multiple um, IOs. Now, if we look at this example, let's take the packaging world. Okay, The, the packaging machine builders and, and, and packaging and manufacturers are starting to use these uh, smart transport track systems or smart conveyor systems uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, however, they are lacking that actuation and the machine builders that we're working with and the manufacturers that we're working with today are using it exactly for what you're seeing here. It's how do you create an adaptive machine and how do you leverage this technology to create that adaptive machine? What you can see here is that each mover, for example, has a gripper on it. That gripper <coughs> can change the product that it's uh, basically gripping or holding. So it can be a carton box, like an orange juice carton box. It can be this uh, jar that it's holding. You don't need to do a manual changeover. This is an automatic changeover. So now we can support multiple product types, multiple forms, shapes, materials, sizes with this single machine with minimum changeover. We can do, for example, sorting and ejecting. So as the product passes by the, uh, the, the camera or photoelectric cell, now you can eject a defect product. As an example, how would you do this with, uh, without uh, this technology where you can control the gripper on the mover? You would have needed here an external robot, right? An external robot that would basically eject it or take it out of the line, okay? But also you can support multiple package types because we mentioned the variable pitch of the, um, of the, uh, of the movers, right? And this variable pitch can enable us basically to, um, to have multiple package types. So not just multiple product types, but also multiple package types. It can be a single jar, two jars, four jars, and all this can be controlled without changeovers and with minimal setup of the machine. All this controlled over the air through the master and the um, and the PLC. Uh, again, what would we need to do here in a different situation, like what you see this part of the line? You would need here like four, five, six Delta robots that would do this pick and place kind of operation. So not only did it, did we create basically a mini machine from this transport track system, but we got all the actions that include the support of multiple product types, the sorting, the ejecting, and the uh, the pick in place. And we've created a very adaptive nature uh, for this machine. All this actually while reducing the footprint of the machine, 
less mechanical parts, less components, less footprints. So we're also driving down the maintenance operations and increasing the, you know, the, st the sustainability in terms of footprint in the factory and the amount of machines that you need to place to support multiple products. So instead of having the same product, having to have the same product come to this track system, we got products of different sizes and shapes coming down the conveyor. We have something reading what product is next. It could be a barcode reader or something else. And it tells the gripper or the 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 actuator on the on the on the platform. It says, all right, size for this size product. So you hold it and it doesn't fall off. And so that's constantly changing as a new product comes in, the gripper sizes correctly and grabs that product the right way and then it takes it and if something says it needs to be ejected it can eject it itself it doesn't need mm -hmm. some other so it can eject on a per platform basis and then it could actually put it in the box you don't need those like you were saying those delta robots there the platform itself could have the robot or whatever pick and place on it to actually put it in the box and know you know how to orientate it and so on based on its unique you know, ID, whatever product is on it at that particular trip. Very interesting stuff. And, and these are things that could not be done before. And these are things that getting back to, you know, what we said in the beginning, if you would attempt to do this with a conventional wireless solution, such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, this would not be able to be achieved, not in terms of the latency, not in terms of the reliability or the scalability that's uh, that's required here. Um, same goes, you know, again, staying in the packaging space in the same way that we have those, uh, you know, like the, the the secondary packaging machine that I was showing, you know, you, you have other uh, kinds of rotating and moving uh, devices, uh, not just in packaging, but also automotive and other industries, such as rotary tables, <coughs> carousels. And in the same way, you can now control uh, the, the moving uh, components instead of having, uh, you know, wired sensors on each of these that are running on the carousel, for example, that are running through the center axis Okay, or the slip rings where you have, you can have as you can see here, a hundred or two hundred of these on a single carousel in a packaging line, right? All these are running through the center axis, and by connecting this with Dialink Wireless, basically you're eliminating all the communication cables that would run through the center axis. Again, reducing footprint, reducing complexity, and even of course reducing maintenance and maintenance cost due to some of these cables running through these slip rings. Now, one of the things I noticed, though, is if you're going to connect this to a device like, um, you know, a bunch of a valve stack, right? So, like, do you have like an on box mounting for the for the bridge? Because, you know, if it's inside a metal box, it's not going to be able to transmit, right? Yeah. So th th this depends on the on the design of the of the uh, of the product. Um, in some case, you can actually, first of all, in some cases, connect an external antenna. So, for example, okay. on this hub, you can see here the option that what I'm pointing at to connect an external oh, antenna. Okay. That would be that would be one option. Uh, the other option, first of all, by the way, with Iolink Wireless, <clears throat> it, it behaves very well in noisy environments. That also that's also one of the things that with this protocol, the way it's defined, the way it's designed, the type of modulation, which is a GFSK modulation, actually lives well with noisy environments so there's actually no need even for line of sight if you would take this bridge and put it under a machine right uh, without a line of sight to the master you would still get the transmission uh, through so there's no need for a line of sight the other thing is based on the design of the integrated product in some cases you integrate the module as i mentioned the pcb okay inside then we actually uh, uh, design a, a specific antenna now, these manifolds actually are a great example, which we're working with some vendors today to integrate inside where they're putting an external antenna. So they take the module. OK, I'll go back to this module over here. Um, there it is. You see here, there's also an antenna connection. So they embed it and then they pull it from this, you know, UFL kind of connector and they pull out an SMA connector for an antenna on the device. But the other option in very you know, extreme cases is actually a custom antenna. And this leads us actually to the next example. The next example is when you're looking at the machine tooling. So CNC machines, grinding, milling machines, you know, many machines out there in, in, in a variety of uh, industries. And one of the challenges that has always been in, in, in these machines is actually doing measurements at the point of tooling, at the point of clamping. This chuck with these jaws and this workpiece over here, it's rotating at 6,000 rounds per minute. 
It is not possible to connect cables to measure force or vibration or any other you know, parameters here while the machine is operating, while it's you know, tooling. That's just not possible to do today. What do you need to do? You need to embed a wireless radio connected to the sensors inside these tools. And that's exactly what we did here with this example. Now, the, the challenge is, of course, as I mentioned, the rotation speed. The challenge is very harsh conditions. This is inside a CNC machine uh, with a lot of pieces flying inside the machine, a lot of noise. And also the design itself, because of the power, you need a low power design. This needs to be battery powered. You cannot connect cable power um, to this device. And it's also low power um, devices and a very small footprint. And this is, again, what we did here with this manufacturer. It's a manufacturer of tooling uh, components for CNC machines and a German manufacturer. And we've actually embedded the module, as you can see here, inside the jaw. It's battery powered, low voltage, and it's connected to a force sensor, a vibration sensor, and a temperature sensor. And you can see here the special antenna design, because this is a steel jaw, right? You cannot transmit out of this jaw. So it's a special silicon cover for the antenna, okay, that enables it to still transmit. So this is transmitting at 6,000 rounds per minute from a CNC machine um, successfully. Again, cannot be done with cables and cannot be done with conventional wireless solutions. And it's a replaceable battery too? You <laughs> yeah, as you can see here, there's a cover and it's a replaceable battery. It's also rechargeable. Wow, that's awesome. At that kind of speeds. That's awesome. Right, exactly. And, and you can integrate it to a variety of sensors um, at the um, device level. And the master, again, talks both with the PLC. Uh, this is data that's now relayed back to the PLC. And the PLC now can also relay back the data, right, to calibrate better the uh, machine and to tune the machine, but also pushing data to the, you know, more of the IIoT side or cloud application in order to do more you know data analytics and gather insights and and the benefits are um, it enables you to have much better uh, and precise you know part confirmation and tool setup without manual intervention um, it enables you to do machine tuning uh, because of these real-time measurements and the feedback and the communication between the plc now and the device itself also, safety with these CNC machines, sometimes the, these tools or the work pieces can fly off. If the force degrades, um, these work pieces can fly off the machine. It can be a safety issue. It can also be a machine damage, of course, which can be pretty expensive. Predictive maintenance, you can see here on the image uh, on the right-hand side, an example of by analyzing the patterns at the tooling point, I can know now when the tool itself um, is, uh, is degrading and based on that, um, have uh, you know predictive maintenance and of course better quality and also you know traceability and um, and analytics. Again, very unique solution, the only one of its kind, which is already being sold to uh, machine builders. Next example is uh, with uh, with robotics. As we all know, and we've seen many of these robots, there is quite a bit of uh, cables running along these uh, these robotic arms. Now, this causes uh, complexity to the deployment of these uh, robots. It also causes maintenance issues when one of these cables uh, you know, tears or breaks in terms of maintaining it. Uh, the mounting itself with the, well, all the mounting accessories and the pipes and, 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 and such. Um, and also, it's pretty expensive. These cables uh, are very uh, high quality uh, and, uh, you know, high torsion kinds of cables that are pretty expensive because they need to have a very high spec in terms of their motion and, and, and being able to, you know, to, to move flexibly constantly constantly for a year, a year and a half, two years. And, and, and this is something that if you could only have power running through the end of arm over here, and then everything being controlled wirelessly enables you with the, with a very, uh, with, with a big advantage in terms of all these things, maintenance, complexity, flexibility, and overall cost of the uh, entire solution. And similar to what we showed with the intelligent tooling and the transport track systems, right? By enabling a solution with iolink wireless, there are several options. One option, as we can see at the bottom, is we just embed iolink wireless in the gripper, in the pump, and today we're already working with with pump manufacturers and with gripper manufacturers to embed the modules inside the device itself, okay? 
Um, and one of the things we've seen is also the, you know, the variety of power options, right? So we talked about the intelligent tooling and the power was received from the battery. We talked about the transport track systems and the power was received from the inductive power rail. And here we get the power at the end of arm because every robot at the end of the day has the power that's running the 24 volt DC that's running from the end of arm. So it's connected here directly to this flange that has the IO-Link wireless embedded. And then we're basically eliminating all the cables that are running across the device. Now, when we're talking at the big tooling devices, as we mentioned, which can have dozens of IOs on them, if we would put multiple hubs, for example, okay, on these, all these cables now that are connecting from the hubs to the devices, the hub is transmitting wirelessly, but now all these cables to the devices, they're not really moving or they don't require any flexibility or then there's no torsion that's applied on them because they're not connected to the joints or the arm of the robot, okay? So we're basically just driving the power through the end of arm and eliminating all the cables that need to run to the pumps, to the sensors, and any other types of devices on these tools. So we're gaining much more flexibility. We're reducing the complexity, less maintenance because of the wear and tear. We're also reducing actually the payload uh, because of less mounting accessories, less cables, you know, they're very short cables and and uh, not uh, expensive heavy cables um, and the cost um, and the cost itself. Another example, uh, Sean, which I want to show here is condition monitoring. So up till now, when we've been talking about robots and transport tracks and the intelligent tooling like on the CNC machines, it was all about motion, high speed motion, which is indeed, you know, a place where IO-Link wireless shines, right? Where you have that high speed motion nature where in many cases it's complex or not even possible to connect cables. But even when we're looking at places where you have like a, a fixed kind of a, a solution, for example, uh, you know, a factory with, with hundreds of discrete machines, right? A lot of the things we're seeing, of course, is retrofitting. You want to add a vibration sensor, you want to add an airflow sensor or any type of sensor onto these machines. And this could be hundreds of machines. This can get to be complex because now you need to run that cable from the sensor to a PLC or to a hub and, and run it in between the machines because you can't just run it on the floor. And this becomes uh, an issue because of the overall total cost of ownership of the deployment. And in some cases, again, talking about regular wireless solutions, it can get to be a reliability issue. And here, we, we mentioned a few devices where you can take, for example, this airflow sensor and connect it with this bridge. And now you're monitoring. And now in this case, we're connecting the bridge directly to the 24 volts. What you can see here for is the bridge connected directly to 24 volts in the machine. Every machine has 24 volts anywhere. Um, and, and you're basically pretty much done and it's communicating with the master. Same thing goes with the hub. Multiple ports, multiple devices can be connected. And also even devices like this device, which is a counter. So it's an IO-Link wireless device, but it's also has it also has added functionalities. In this case, it's a, it's counting actually. So in many cases, when uh, system integrators um, are doing uh, uh, retrofits, they're adding counting devices at all sorts of points or bottlenecks on the production line, right? And here in this case, this can be connected to a, a, a digital output. And it's not only relaying that message, it's also doing the counting. So it's also serving as a counter device. And again, the benefits are much more flexibility because it can be installed not just uh, on regular places on the machines, but also places that are hard to reach, also moving areas on the machines. It's very reliable uh, because it's immune to the noisy um, uh, environments in the factory. Um, it's industrial grade. Um, uh, it supports both IO-Link analog or digital devices that can be converted or uh, converted to uh, IO-Link wireless. And of course, we're reducing the cost and complexity, the total cost of ownership of this retrofit action, where if it's on one or two machines, okay, but if it's hundreds of machines, many machines, then <clears throat> it can get to be uh, uh, pretty uh, costly. You know, what if my photo wire device actuator doesn't have IO-Link built in? So these devices can work with both IO-Link smart devices, but also dumb analog and digital devices, right? Yeah, indeed. Okay. You can take analog or digital devices, multiple devices. Yeah. yeah. You can even take, for example, even an off-the-shelf 
I.O. Hub, okay? So whether it's Alan Bradley or IFM, you know, an I.O. Hub where you can connect digital and analog. So it has an I.O. link output, right? Yep. And it has, let's say, like eight ports for analog or digital. I see. So you can actually take that analog hub, connect the bridge to the I.O. link port on the analog, on, on the multi-port hub, and then connect multiple analog and digital sensors to a standard, you know, Allen Bradley or IFM or whatever kind of hub. So you can even so, do that. Uh, so you're turning one port, you're going from the port on your device to like an Allen Bradley hub or a Siemens hub or somebody's hub. And that way you, you're actually taking those six ports and you're connecting the hub to each, six, each of the six ports and really expanding it. Exactly. And by doing that, even that single bridge is now actually communicating information from numerous devices, not just from a single device. Very cool. Okay, so to sum it up, you know, we, we, we talked about this. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail on the you know product portfolio, but as we mentioned, devices uh, such as IOLink Wireless Master and IOLink Wireless uh, Bridges and Hubs, all of them also enable you to embed um, inside. So if it's an automation equipment manufacturer that wants to embed it in their uh, sensor or actuator or in their uh, wired master device and make it wireless, that's also um, an, an option. Uh, software for uh, configuring, monitoring, controlling, but also for data aggregation. So our software also enables you to collect the data from multiple masters and serve as an MQTT publisher, secure MQTT publisher for <clears throat> other applications that are consuming the data, whether on the cloud or uh, on premises. And you know, basically to summarize it, as we mentioned um, in the beginning, we want the machines to do more, and we think that by applying these uh, this technology of IOLink Wireless, there are many solutions out there that uh, we think that the machine builders and automation equipment manufacturers and integrators you know, we're not aware even of the fact that this could be done because they were thinking conventional wireless solutions, right? But IOLink Wireless was designed specifically for this need for control and monitoring with factory automation in mind. Um, and, and, and essentially, we're, we're really enabling the, you know, the digital transformation here of these machines and production lines by adding in industrial wireless automation. Yeah, you know, I think, up until this point, you're kind of thinking when you're going to do wireless I.O., I think a lot of times you're thinking you're going to just have a, a rack of I.O. out there and then you'll convert it to wireless, whether it's Profinet or Ethernet or whatnot. But now we can just can go right from the devices and go wireless I.O. link. And I think that opens up, that reduces the cost of what you're putting on in the space requirements of what you're putting on the wireless location, like at the end of the arm of a tool. And um, it just opens up a whole new world of possibility, especially since you can have so many of these in such a close proximity all working together, which um, and without the latency of Wi-Fi, which is which is becomes an issue, a major issue. So um, very interesting. I really, Gabby, I really appreciate you coming on the show and walking through this. I think you're going to find some of our audience uh, very interested in learning more. I see that you're actually going to uh, ProMat, which will be going on right about when this comes out. And um, that you'll also be, you're planning on being an automation fair in Boston at uh, later in the year? Yeah, yeah. So in North America, automation fair in Boston, uh, ProMed, as you mentioned. Uh, there's also, I think uh, for the first time, there's also uh, uh, an IOLink user workshop. Uh, there's going to be three sessions of those, part of the IOLink uh, consortium, uh, where we're going to be presenting. And there's actually going to be uh, some lectures on IOLink wireless. Uh, first one is going to be in Detroit, actually. Um, and then in a few uh, other uh, uh, locations. So there's also going to be that, uh, which we're going to be um, at um, in, in North America. And of course, a bunch of events also uh, in, uh, in in Europe. Uh, you know, there's the, the Hanover event uh, coming up, the SPS Smart Production Solutions in Italy coming up, Interpac, which is, you know, equivalent to the U.S. PAC Expo. All these are going to be places where we're, where we're going to be showcasing IOLink Wireless and the solutions that it supports. Yeah, and you guys can find all of that right on their website, C-O-R-E-T-I-G-O.com, cortigo.com, and uh, I found it very easily, found all the events myself. So, uh, Gabby, I just want to thank you again for coming on. Any closing words? Um, no, first of all, thank you very much. And uh, one more thing uh, to add on to your summary, I think, is the point that, you know, the nice thing about this uh, is that it supports both existing and new solutions or new designs. So this is not just for new machines. 
Uh, this is also for existing systems, existing solutions, so both brownfield and greenfield, new designs and existing designs. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And I want to thank Gabby from Cortigo for coming on the show and bringing us up to speed on their wireless IO-Link products. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And if you want to follow us or support us, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all of my online training courses over at theautomationschool.com. With that, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.